Good morning, church. Hope you're all doing well, considering the circumstances. Rachel and I sure miss being with our Preston Road family on Sunday mornings. Hopefully, we'll all be able to gather together again soon, but in the meantime, we wish you and your families the very best. I read a devotional recently entitled Protect This House, the topic of which was about taking stock of our thoughts. The message of the devotional was to recognize which thoughts are healthy and therefore should be entertained versus those thoughts that are potentially harmful and therefore should not be dwelled upon. I have to admit that this struck a chord with me as my thoughts have been all over the board here lately. I'm trying to determine what's noisy versus what's informative, what's uncertain versus what's reliable, what I should be afraid of versus what's safe, what action I should take versus when I should just be still. Maybe you can relate to some of these questions. Sorry to disappoint, I obviously don't have specific answers for you, but I can tell you this. I'm thankful that we get together together at this table where there is clarity, where things come back into focus as we remember the Prince of Peace. Jesus, after sharing the Last Supper with his disciples, promised them the Holy Spirit, of which we know one of the fruits is peace. Jesus said to them, I am leaving with you a gift, peace of mind and heart. Paul, later in Philippians, wrote the following, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We've heard these first two verses a lot here lately, and rightly so, but listen to what Paul goes on to say in verses 8 and 9. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put these things into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. My intention with these comments is not to discount anyone's feelings or fears or to simply gloss over justified concerns. Rather, I want to remind us of the promise found in Isaiah, which says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, whose thoughts are fixed upon you. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, I would invite you to do just that, to fix your thoughts on Jesus, to remember him and to dwell upon him, and in doing so, experience his peace. Will you pray with me for both the bread and the cup? Heavenly Father, Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and the peace of mind and heart that we enjoy from our relationship with you. Lord, I ask that during this difficult time that you would give us wisdom. I ask that you would guide us so that we can be ambassadors of peace and exemplify your love to the world around us. God, as we eat the bread and drink the cup, help us to remember Jesus, to remember his life, his example. Help us to remember his sacrifice on the cross. Help us to remember the hope that came with his resurrection. Please forgive us of our sins. Forgive us when we get distracted or when we doubt. Help us to fix our thoughts on Jesus and in doing so to renew our trust in you. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.